So what we do essentially is we disconnect the system from the need for the donor and we make the platelets directly from stem cells. So I'm Constantine uh, on behalf of EBD Group here at Biopharm America 2017. I have the pleasure of speaking with Sven Carlson of uh, Platelet Biogenesis, who happened to win yesterday's Startup Challenge Award here at the, at the conference. Good to speak with you today. Good to speak with you too, Constantine. Thank you. You bet. So tell me a little bit about your company, uh, really the problem it's addressing, and, um, and what you're doing to solve it. Sure. So platelets, as you know, are the band-aids of the bloodstream, right? They're the cells in your blood that stop you from bleeding. Now, all platelets today come from human volunteer donors. But the real problem with platelets is they only have a five-day shelf life. You spend two of these days screening them for bacteria and viruses, usually a third day transporting them. So by the time they're actually ready to be transfused, you usually have less than a two-day shelf life remaining. So this means you know, anything can create a problem in the system. So cold winter weather, you know, summer vacation, anything that causes donors to choose to not go out and donate blood results in a healthcare crisis. And that's in a normal operating environment. Right? When we actually have an emergency like a terrorist attack or a hurricane, Right, Puerto Rico right now, for example, victims cannot get access to the playlist that they need. Now, all those problems really come down to the fact that we're dependent on a volunteer human donor for our playlist supply. So what we do essentially is we disconnect the system from the need for the donor, and we make the playlist directly from stem cells. And so how do you, okay, that's really interesting. So uh, for the audience's sake, I mean, how, are, how does the body manufacturer create uh, platelets? Uh, that are if the conventional or kind of human derived. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, so most platelets today are made in the, the lungs and the bone marrow. And essentially, what you'll have is the stem cells will turn into parent cells, which are called megakaryocytes. And those, those parent cells will sit in the bone marrow. And then shear forces will flow over those cells and trigger them. Those shear forces are the, the flowing blood, right? And that'll trigger them to turn into platelets. Now in the past, everybody's tried to make platelets in a static culture environment. And essentially our, our breakthrough or innovation was to look to mother nature for innovation, right? And look how are they made in the human body. And you know what, what our hypothesis was is that those sheer forces of flowing blood played an important role in triggering the parent cells to make platelets. So we created a microfluidic bioreactor that essentially mimics the architecture of human bone marrow. So we can feed the parent cells in run media over them that's comparable to flowing blood and that triggers them to turn into platelets at much higher yields than you would get in a static culture environment. And so you're, 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 um, you're producing these platelets uh, at your site yep. and then you ship them out to blood banks and hospitals? Uh, yep, yeah, that's the plan in the future. I mean, right now we're a preclinical stage company, so you know we're working on the bench, we're optimizing our protocols, we're scaling up all the things that you know a startup in our situation has to do to get into the clinic. But the idea is, once we have an approved product, you know you could essentially swap in you know our playlet unit for a donor playlet unit. The only differences would be is that they should be a little bit younger because they're all created at the same time. They'll be completely sterile, so there's no risk of that bacterial or viral infection getting in and they'll be cheaper. So as you're a winner of yesterday's startup competition, why don't you tell us a little bit about you know, the team behind you, uh, where the technology came from, um, and maybe some of your plans as far as growing the business. Yeah, sure. So uh, you know, I, my role is essentially to translate the work that's actually being done by the scientists. Right? They're doing the real work. I got to be here and sort of talk about what we're working on to an audience, but really I'm just translating the work that the team is doing you know, in the lab, which is what really matters at the end of the day, as you know. you know. We originally spun out of Harvard, my two co-founders are Harvard professors, um, and then we translated the technology uh, through the normal process, you know, achieved a Series A fundraising recently, which gives us some runway ahead of us, and now it's essentially to go out and execute on the scientific plan uh, in order to scale this up and bring it to the market. Out of curiosity, what's the regulatory pathway for your type of solution? Yeah, so platelets are viewed by the FDA as a therapeutic, uh, so it, it does require a BLA approval. Um, fortunately, the, the clinical trials should be considerably faster and cheaper than you would get for a typical molecule. Um, but really, the, the important part is the preclinical work because you know, we've been transfusing platelets for 100 years. So we have a really good idea of how they work and how they perform in animal models. So by the time we get to the clinic, 
we should have a really good sense of whether our platelets are performing the same as a donor platelet does. And if they are performing the same in a preclinical model, uh, the risk profile will be very different for us once we get into the clinic compared to a, a typical biotech company. Is there a, 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 a chronic lack of supply or shortage of platelets in the industry? Uh, I mean, in terms of a clinical setting, is this a, you know, a, how acute a problem is it? Yeah, so in the U.S. about 20% of platelet orders go unfilled. So a doctor calls, needs a platelet unit, and that can manifest itself in a couple of different ways, right? It could be that somebody has their chemotherapy delayed by a couple of days because there are no platelets in stock. It could be somebody who had a major trauma event gets one platelet unit when they really needed two or three platelet units because there's a lack of supply. And if you talk to blood bankers, this is a constant battle that they're facing. I mean, platelets are really their major pain point. And it's how do you divvy up and how do you provide that supply to people to try and keep the inventory you know, at a minimum. And they sort of have this green, you know, amber, red system they run on, and they're pretty much always in that amber and red zone. Right. And certainly when you run into, you know, hurricanes, I mean, the whole southeast right now, they basically had to cancel all blood drives and blood collections. So for red blood cells, you have 42 days of inventory, right? So you have some supply. Playlists, if you don't collect them, you know, five days later, you're completely out. That sounds like a... a it's like a very promising value proposition that you have. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge pain point, and, you know, I, it's examples like that that are frustrating, but it's also, I think, what keeps us motivated, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, it is biotech, it is healthcare, and getting this product to the patient is the most important thing. I totally agree. Well, I wish you much success in your endeavor, and, and I look forward to, you know, tracking your progress. Thank you, Constantine. You